Okay, so a friend asked me um, earlier today if I could explain how I do screenshots of Flight Simulator and how I get them to look as I do. So I'm going to quickly look through some of the um, view modes in Flight Simulator. So obviously you, you have the normal camera view where you hold the right mouse button down and you can pan around and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you press the end key on the keyboard that will take you to the external view and again the right mouse button will pan around and the mouse wheel will zoom in and out and that's great except it puts the plane in a particular place in the screen and there's not much you can do about that yeah so it's down in the bottom third of the screen all the time okay so the view the the way to solve this I'll, I'll show you the key combination way to do it and then I'll show you where it is in the menus so end on the keyboard so that's the end key next to page up page down home insert and delete between the keypad and the main keyboard so end toggles to the external view yeah insert will toggle to the outside view now you have to be careful because if you are already on the external view and you press insert you might get different results so make sure you do it from the cockpit so when you're inside the cockpit which you can do end to get into press insert yeah and it will take you to what's called the showcase camera okay so i'm going to go back in the cockpit and then i'm going to explain exactly what i've just done from the camera menu that is always available at the top of the screen in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you open camera view, you've got the cockpit, the external and the showcase camera. So this is the cockpit view. That is the external view. And again, the mouse still works. You can drag it around with the right mouse button. And then you get the showcase view. Where the showcase view is different, and as you will notice, you can no longer drag it around. There are two sets of key commands. So the first set of key commands are W, A, S and D and they translate the camera, they move the camera. So w, uh, A and D go left and right, W and S go forwards and backwards. And next to them R and F on the keyboard go up and down. On the keypad 2, 4, 8 and 6, so the cross kind of the cross configured keys rotate the camera in any direction plus and minus zoom in and out so they go from a sort of a, a fisheye lens to a normal kind of perspective of you know how the human eye might work you have to think of it, a human eye is about 50 degrees I think field of view so to get things looking fairly normal that, I mean that's not enough that's probably about right Okay, so there you go. So we can move around and we can pan around. And we can do this in the air as well, but the problem comes in once you're in the air is how do you get it to pause itself so you can maybe arrange the camera shot just so. And I'll show you that in a moment. So one of the other things you've got here is drone focus mode. At the moment I have got it disabled, so it looks like everything is in focus. If we turn it on to auto, what that will do is whatever is in the center of the field of view becomes sharp so it's what basically reduce the focal length of the camera so less depth of field is in focus I did photography at college so I kind of I understand what I'm talking about here but it basically means if you imagine in terms of distance from the camera when you've got this on auto it reduces the depth of field so only a very narrow band is in focus now the further we get away from the thing that's in focus the wider the band that's in focus becomes so if we a way to illustrate this is if we go down to the ground down here and we go right up next to this front wheel so you can see there's a very very narrow band of only a, you know a few inches that are in focus between you know between the camera and away from the camera so it's, at the moment it's centered on there and anything further away is out of focus, anything closer is out of focus. Now if we get further away from the thing we're focusing on, more and more there's a wider band of things being in focus between being further away. You can see look it's right out to about here on the ground. Now if we come further away you can see it's out to here now. 
yeah so if we could raise in in the air a little bit you'll be able to see it on the ground where the ground becomes blurry it's right out to here look before it starts to go out of focus and that's because of the focal length it's kind of a it's the geometry of photography it's kind of how it just how it works unfortunately you can't change the focal length now in the real world with a camera the, it's to do with the size of the aperture and the camera and you change this that's the hole the light is getting in and with the real camera the brighter the light is the smaller the hole is required to capture the light and the the bigger the depth of field so when you see photographers going for depth of field it's easy to, easier to do in low light because you need to make the aperture in the camera as big as possible the hole in the lens as big as possible so obviously to that means the camera isn't open for as long because it's got a big hole open so in bright light it's more difficult to do because if you open the camera up too light too much it's going to burn the photo out um, so what else can you do in here you can go to manual on this and this gives us a drone focus slider and it allows us to set where the focus is so you can get it in the ballpark of where you need it to be and just leave it there so there you go so that means it's not going to lose the focus so you can move the thing that's in focus out of the center of the shot and it will still be fine with it yeah so we could maybe come up here Yeah, and you could compose your photograph so the airplane isn't in the middle, but it's still in focus, and other things are not in are not in focus on purpose. So the other trick to this is I have got an Xbox controller that is plugged in. I'll put this back on disabled, so we've got everything in focus at the moment. So I've got an Xbox controller that's plugged into the USB port of my computer, and it's got two analog sticks on it and two analog triggers which means I can have very much finer control over the translation so it's not an on-off on switch anymore it's a little bit or a lot yeah a little bit or a lot in any in any direction and the same for panning so I can do both at once for example I'm going left on one stick and right on the other so I can do that kind of thing so if you were trying to do sweeping shots with the cam with the recorded flights with the recorder tool you can do that kind of thing yeah so you can go and do these kind of sweeping dolly shots that you might imagine that a movie would do it's an awful lot of work to do it but it just proves you can do it uh, the triggers on the back of the the Xbox controller control the height in the same way but again you can give be if you're careful with it with your fingers you can go slow or fast when you're moving the camera also oh, actually something I didn't um, say is 7 and 9 on the keypad will rotate the camera and the same with the shoulder buttons on the Xbox controller will rotate the camera so there you go you can move the camera around where it gets interesting and you might have wondered how I did this in some of my online movies or um, sorry photos if you're very very careful you can get the camera inside the body of the aeroplane and if you get it in the right place the, the pilots will appear there's like a very very narrow window where you can have the camera in the in the cockpit with the pilots there you go so you can play games with getting that to look nice uh, if we go yeah, there you go so again it just gives you actually some idea of just how detailed these cockpits are because if we go and go right up next to the buttons it's mad just how much they've modeled this stuff oops you have to be very careful when you're really close up to the cockpits but it gives you a real appreciation for just the quality of not just the, the modeling but the textures as well i mean how high resolution are they Yeah, see what I mean? It's very, very difficult. It's very touchy. Such extreme zooms. I mean, just look at that instrument. If we zoom in as well, 
you can almost see that it's painted, can't you? It's mad. It does expose how bad the screws are, I guess, but... Anyway. There you go. So that's how you can mess around with the cameras in Flight Simulator. And get pictures when you're in flight. Now, all you have to do to save a picture is hold the Windows key and press Print Screen. So if I hold Windows and Print Screen, you'll see the screen darken for a moment as you do it. So if we go over next to the cockpit and we'll get one of these arty pictures of the, the flight crew. So if I press Windows and Print Screen, we get a nice picture. So that's not the end of the story though. What I typically do, if we go and look in Windows, inside your Pictures folder of your profile, you should have a Screenshots folder. And inside there, the screenshots will appear that you have taken in the game. So if I go and open one of these, you will see in the Photo Viewer in Windows, it's taking a while to load for some reason, and there's the photo I took. Okay. Now, what we can do, and what I typically do, to make them look, give them that little bit more polish, is I open a piece of software called Photoscape. And if we go into the editor in Photoscape, oh, Photoscape is an um, open source freeware piece of software. We go and load our photograph from the screenshots folder, and we can start playing with things like maybe bring the size down, which will naturally anti alias it even further. So I'm just taking it down a little bit from the size it was. And then we can maybe go into Deepen and deepen the colours. Yeah, so it's just darken the colours up. And you can go mad with this and go into Filters, for example, and do Film Effects. So you can say, like, things like that. And you might want to say, also in Filters, um, do some vignetting around the edge of the photo and it's just darkened up the edge and you might want to say I want the, the, the bright areas to have some sort of soft focus yeah so you get eventually you get a photograph that you're happy with and you can just save it out as a JPEG and off you go again so what's quite nice about Photoscape is when you do save your photograph if we close it you end up with the photo you've changed, which you can see is that first one there, 695, or is it? I can't know, it was the second one I changed. And it makes it puts the original in an originals folder for you, so you don't lose the photo you edited. Yeah? So you end up with your, your nice picture to go and share on the internet. And all I've done there is tweak the colours a little bit and done a few filters on it to make it look even better. But yeah, so there you go, that's how I take screenshots in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I did make mention as well, didn't I, of how to do it when you're in the air. So let's go back in the aeroplane, press Control E. Let's fire the plane up. And we'll show how we can mess around with the cameras while we're in flight without crashing. The hint is we're going to pause the flight we're not going to use slew. Okay, so we're at Heathrow, so it's probably gonna it's probably the worst place I could have chosen to do this. So let's re release the wheel brakes. I'm not gonna bother pushing back. I think we've probably got room to turn around here. Let's see over the nose. Oh no we haven't. So another advantage, if I do enter slew mode, because I've got the Xbox controller plugged in, I can very, very carefully translate us and rotate us at the same time. Yeah. So off we go again. So I'm going to take off from a taxiway because I really can't be bothered to go and drive a mile across the Heathrow concourse to get onto the runway. Unless this is it right here. No, we're right out on the edge of the airfield, aren't we? Oh no, we're fairly close. There's an airplane coming in, look. Yeah, we were closer than I thought. 
So I'm going to break all sorts of laws now. And come skittering across the runway. Oh. All I want to do is get airborne, really. Okay. So there's our normal external view, and that's great, and that's all sorts of fun. And we can also do the same trick, but if we go to the showcase camera, we can no longer control the plane. It's a real problem. We've got no control now. So what we have to do is press the pause break key at the top right of the keyboard. But I'm going to cut the throttle before I do it, otherwise... I think they call it live pause. So there it goes. We've got live pause now. So we can actually take our time, go to the camera, go to showcase mode, and with the plane sat here, we can either use the keyboard or the Xbox controller to move ourselves around. And we can get rid of this dialogue while we're doing it. Yeah, and we can frame our shot really nicely. So say we wanted that there, and we want to be further away maybe. Let's, go, let's do the classic, so we actually want the plane up in the corner with a bit more of the airfield in view. So yeah, maybe that was our shot that we were after. And then we can press the Windows key and print screen, for example. And we've got another photograph to go and edit in our photo editing program. So obviously if you're using the Flight Recorder program, you can get it to replay your flight and you can be messing around with the showcase camera during the replay. Yeah, and you could use OBS for example and that's how you get your kind of tracking dolly shots of the plane doing landings and stuff so you know, you could go whizzing past as the plane lands for example. Anyway there you go, that's how you can get nice angles for screenshots and for videos. It's the showcase camera and it really helps if you've got an Xbox controller to plug in because you can do these games with moving and rotating at the same time. But if you're just taking stills it really doesn't matter. You can use the keyboard for exactly the same thing. Okay, I'm going to end the video there. So let's let them fly away. So if I press pause again Oh, I think I can't do it when I'm in the, the camera. I have to do it when I'm in the plane. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, I'm going to end the video there.